Hi everyone, I'm Joanna House Manhattan, golfer, balón, soccer, doti, grobla. Y yo soy Jennifer Lorenzo Gallegos Díaz Coto. And this is Hyphenated, the podcast about living in the hyphen. And today we wanted to talk about something that you guys have been requesting us to talk about, and that is telenovelas. <gasps> Drama! <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about telenovelas and nostalgia. We're going to be talking about their success around the world and obviously the problematic aspects of it. But before we do, uh, Jenny and I, we wrote a scene based off existing telenovela scenes that we're going to perform and translate for you in real time to get you in the mood in case you don't know much about this art form. Um, well, in order to get in the mood, you have to like stand in front of a mirror and just maniacally apply red lipstick over your mouth. <laughs> As you say these things. <laughs> Jenny, I don't have red lipstick. I <laughs> well. I think I think just like my my inner anxiety will have to do. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm gonna uh, uh, so what what we'll do is I'll do one sentence and then you you translate it in the same. Okay. Okay, let's go. Entonces eres tu esquinkle babosa quien estaba enamorada de Luis Mario Juan Carlos Andres. So it is you, drooling slug child who was in love with Luis Mario Juan Carlos Andres. Te vas a quemar en las llamas del infierno, desgraciada. You will burn in the flames of hell, disgraced woman. Truly not that dramatic in comparison to some other things I've seen. (laughs) I feel like in English it just sounds like a scene out of all my children or... (laughs) You know what I sort of compare it to more than actual soap operas? I saw a WWE mm-hmm. with like my very American friend recently. And I was like, oh, people in ridiculous costumes, fake fighting and slapping each other, hitting each other with a chair. Like this is a telenovela for Americans. Except they're just missing some amnesia and uh, a mysterious twin brother. <laughs> so Jenny, you, I didn't really grow up watching a ton of telenovelas. I would like hide um in my grandma's room sometimes and watch them because my mom didn't allow me to um she would let me watch like really horrible news on cnn but like would not let me watch (laughs) telenovelas which in retrospect is really weird (laughs) but you grew up watching a ton of telenovelas right straight up straight up i did um i don't know how i was allowed to but it you know it was it was the norm i grew up i was a fetus consuming telenovelas I was named after a soap opera character, but on an American soap opera called All My Children. Her name was Jennifer, and she was killed off. Um, <laughs> great choice, mother. Uh, so that's where Jennifer came from. Uh, so my mom was a huge telenovela binger, whether it was in English or Spanish. And then my abuela, that was just her favorite pastime. She would sit in a rocking chair from like 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. consuming back-to-back novelas Mm -hmm. and i was there for it i was there for all of it what were some of your favorite like telenovelas in history oh man i mean most the most iconic ones are with talia oh my god of (laughs) Um, course marimar maria la del barrio um (laughs) rosalinda i just think that it's very funny because every title sounds like the beginning of a song like, and it was because she's a singer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, because she's a singer. Yes. But like, she sang all her own theme songs. Oh, my Como God. Look at honra, that. Bum, 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 Maria la del barrio soy. Um, <laughs> because the, the, I'm the ready for a premios lo nuestro with my singing, by the way. Um, I think that you deserve to be in the, all categories. <laughs> because I feel like the, the their theme song was almost like a call to action. Like, you oh, would yeah. hear the theme song, and then I remember my grandma would be like, ¡Es hora de la novela! Yeah, yeah, you knew. Like, it was like a, a two-minute long intro. My, I think one of the most iconic songs, aside from the Talia ones, are Luz Clarita, which is about this Luz little girl Clarita. in pigtails. Luz Clarita! Luz That's the one I was allowed to watch because it was a child. Yeah, it was really annoying. And then there was Soñadoras, which was my absolute favorite. Um... <laughs> It's about these young, hip, you know, um, teenagers, I guess, played by 30-year-olds. And um, and their theme song was epic. Like, the, the intros are epic. And it's why mm-hmm. so many comedians, myself included, 
love to spoof them in videos. It's like this cloud background and it's quite nostalgic. I mean, it's how I it's how I bonded with my abuela specifically. We mm-hmm. would just sit there and watch hours and hours of novelas to the point that I still remember so many of them. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, I looked up to some of these characters. I, I remember I got a haircut once when I was 12 to match um, the actress in La Usurpadora. <laughs> Jenny, that- no, you did not. I did. He's like, you grew up in Miami. And, mm-hmm. you know, I was actually reading up on this because I was like, why are telenovelas like so popular? Why do they represent Latin culture? Why is it also like the the typical stereotypical thing to go to when spoofing Latin culture is always novelas <laughs> and like and you know, as I was reading so many so much of the viewership of these comes from Univision and Telemundo in the states. And what a lot of people say is this is the one place so many people not in their countries were able to reconnect with their culture. Yeah. Like they'd work, you know, they live in the States, they they work in another language, they work outside of their comfort zone, and then they come home and they turn on something that is produced or created from their country or a, a, near, a nearby country. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like their way of reconnecting. What's very funny to me is I can probably give the synopsis of every single telenovela in history without even knowing what it's about. Like oh, I can I'm be sure. like, it's about a poor girl. Yeah. She's poor. And then she finds a man that's rich and no one wants them together, but then they end up together. And then there's like an always an added le- level, which is like they're actually brother and sister or like he is evil or like he is a twin. You know what I mean? But it's always that como que <laughs> structure. Am oh, I yeah. right or am I wrong that everything is kind of like a retold Cinderella story? And it's like way more fucked up, even though Cinderella is already kind of fucked up. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> they follow the same tropes, right? Like, there's always going to be amnesia, good or evil twins, babies separated at birth, a poor, again, the poor woman marrying a rich guy. Uh, someone's always trying to poison someone. The, the, the maid who's always chismosa in the corner. <laughs> you know, like, uh-huh. there's always like a lady wearing like a scarf around her head with really dark sunglasses and sitting in a car <laughs> ready to run someone over. There's with, a, always, with a ton of lipstick, with a ton of lipstick. With a ton of lipstick. There's the guy who falls off a cliff into a fiery demise, but then he ends up having one scratch on his forehead the following day at the hospital. Looking hot. <laughs> it's always like the beep. Beep, beep. The hospital, those hospital scenes that my grandma couldn't watch. I'm like, oh well, there's literally nothing going on. Oh, oh my gosh, hold on, I'm forgetting the the main one here. Okay, what? Which one? Someone gets pregnant and then falls down the stairs and then loses the baby. Like they just fall down like five steps and they're like, ay, mi vientre. But you know, I Jenny, I have a theory, and let me know what you think of it. I just have a theory, What's your which theory? is like, you know, this all of these. Stories are so over the top. They're crazy. They're insane. And, you know, I think in a lot of these countries where these things are produced, just the news and what's happening is insane and absurd and full of magical realism. Mm -hmm. That in order to have an escapist, like, narrative, (laughs) it has to be this crazy. Like, in Venezuela, it's like, oh, yeah, like, we have a dictator and tire fires. And then, like, our president thinks he can talk to a bird, and that's the dead ex-president. Like, it, there's so much absurdity <laughs> that the only way for something to be truly escapist in Latin America is for it to be as absurd as a novela. I agree. Right? I think, I think it's a pretty good theory. <laughs> I think I'm going to write a paper and get a PhD <laughs> in novela. <laughs> no university would want it, but... <laughs> So this leads me into the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is something that surprised me a lot, Jenny, Mm -hmm. which is that, like, I thought telenovelas were only successful in Latin America and for, like, Latinos in the States. But it turns out that, like, telenovelas are actually hugely commercial in other places in the world that I had no freaking idea. I had no idea. So I want you to, like, guess three countries where telenovelas would be successful. Like, these are actual places where telenovelas have been a hit. And they're nowhere near Latin America or the States. Well, I know for I know two for a fact. Okay, tell me two. Turkey and Korea, 
Oh my God. How did you know Turkey and Korea? Turkey was because I did a branded, a sponsored video for this Turkish telenovela channel. Mm-hmm. And that's when I and and when I was talking to the agency, they're like, "Yeah, yeah, we, we you know we want to we're trying to get more of the the Latino audience to to come and watch these Turkish novelas because it's really big amongst Latinos to watch these Turkey um, soaps." And then, but then Korea, it's because I have a lot of friends who are Asian, and they're like, "Oh my gosh!" And, and in the comments as well, when I would make Spanish soap opera parodies, a lot of Korean people would come in and they'd be like, "Korean soaps are just the same." <laughs> mm-hmm. They have a lot of the K- same K dramas is what yeah. K dramas absolutely. So other countries where they're hits, which like some of them aren't surprising, like the Philippines, which was you know mm. conquistado por los españoles. Claro, so yeah. I don't find that very surprising. But then mm-hmm. there's like East Timor, Serbia, Czech Republic, wow. and then I recently read a crazy article about the fact that one of Mexico's biggest eh, telenovelas was actually an enormous hit in Russia. In the summer of 1992, after the fall of the Soviet Union, Russian television needed, like, content. They were like, we have nothing. We've been literally in a communist dictatorship, and we don't know what to do. We need to buy stuff to put on the TV. And they were like, oh, my God, let's just buy this Mexican telenovela called Los Ricos También Llora, which is The Rich Also Cry. And that is... (laughs) The rich also cry. Can we just think of something funnier for like a former, like former Soviet Union Russia buying una telenovela that's called The Rich Also Cry? I can't <laughs> find anything more like poetic than this. But in Russia, this it was one of the most watched things in Russia in 1992. Like, Whoa. And, and so I was like, okay, why, why, what, how, how and why? And I think it's because novelas are so relatable and yes everything is crazy and out there and whatever but like the dubbing of this telenovela was like terrible (laughs) but it it kind of doesn't matter like the text doesn't the dialogue kind of doesn't matter you don't need to hear and understand what people are saying because it is so over the top and acted and visual and dramatic that you can just follow by just watching it on mute why, like the facial expressions don't actually represent real facial expressions. They represent <laughs> like a caricature of yeah. what facial expressions are. So it's so easy to just translate into like the human language of emotion. You can literally watch it as if it were a silent film because that's how outrageous the the body movements are, their body language. It's just <laughs> a slap is a slap no matter what country, you know? Yeah. Telenovelas will have a lot of like insane absurdities that represent our culture in like a weird over the top way. But, you know, there's also a significant amount of problems <laughs> within the telenovela world. Like yeah. a lot. Uh, you know, when you're a kid, a lot of things go over your head. You're not really taught these things or you, you, no one discusses <laughs> the problems here. And then you get older and you're like, Hmm. Okay, so why are all the rich people um the blonde, green-eyed Mexicans and then <laughs> then the poor ones with the exception of Dalia cuz whatever. Um the poor ones are usually indigenous actors. But don't you think that even the like quote unquote people that were the poor ones, even like the women specifically of those uh, narratives were still like white. <laughs> like, well, sometimes, um, like in the case of Talia and some of these novelas that she would do, yeah, it it's 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 true. I mean, if she was a lead, she was still made to be. She was still white. They would just mm-hmm. give her braids and call it a day, and like give mm-hmm. her, she would be sin zapatos. Which that's I think it. is probably a ref- <laughs> sin zapatos. Oh my god, that's so true. Like, oh, that's poor. I guess she has no shoes and she has pigtails. That's- like, that's poverty in Latin America. <laughs> is just the pigtails and no shoes, Pretty but much. still super hot and clearly has plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it does represent a lot of the beauty standards in Latin America, though. Like, yeah, even if they want to cast someone that represents a lot of what is a socioeconomic power struggle. Like, they always adhere to the beauty standards of our countries, which, like, in a, oh, I don't know, man, like, people are afraid to say it, but, because I, I always say, like, Venezuela, Venezuela has has racism, and people are like, no, not at all, are you crazy? We're not racist, oh, like, gosh. we're not racist, Latin America no es racista, because we're all mestizo, we're all mixed, and it's like, mm-hmm. well, okay, racist in the sense of, like, 
people who are blonde and blue-eyed are perceived as more beautiful and therefore are cast in telenovelas more than yeah. someone that's darker. Yeah. And then it's a whole classist issue, too, because then, again, the light-skinned actors are usually the rich ones, the very mm-hmm. wealthy ones living in the mansions. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was always, like, the help, las criadas, who were indigenous mm-hmm. or black. I mean, only until recently, you know, my friend Kat Lazo made a video back when we worked at Me Too called Telenovelas So White. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so it, I think it's now finally being called out. But damn, you know, it, it took a while. And I mean, also in a lot of these like story structures, it was just so obvious to see like the portrayal of women. Yes, women were like the protagonists, but they were also put into two categories, which was like oh, the gosh. virgin and the whore. <laughs> Siempre, siempre. Ay, por favor, virgencita, ayúdame. Ay, porque estoy enamorada de Luis Mario. Y... Es una florecita. And then there was also like the old lady who was just like vile, like, which was funny enough, always played by Talia's older sister, Laura Zapata. And she was Talia's, like in real life, her older sister. And she always played this like evil stepmom, <laughs> very Cinderella. I mean, think about it. Most telenovelas were like Cinderella. There was like the ugly stepsisters. There was the evil stepmom. And there was like the poor girl, you know, washing the floors. And it it just it never painted women in a in a positive light. Ever. It Do just... you think that it's like, and you know, you've seen more than me, but I would like to gather that the, like the character that you rooted for was the sweet, innocent girl that sort of didn't, take her fate into her own hands and and then you had the villainess which was like the bitch and gold digger and whatever Mm -hmm. and you know there wasn't a complex female character usually um and they were usually rescued by the galan on a horse mm -hmm. you know and they always then had to deal with the viejo sucio who like was in a ranch and viejo sucio like viejo verde like he was like the younger yeah, mm-hmm. like they were always mistreated, slapped around, raped. Uh, just their their self worth was <laughs> dwindled down to just I don't know their appearance. I have no idea. Like it was just it was too much. Uh, there was too much emphasis placed on their relationship status. Like that's all it was. Like I like all of them. The villain wanted the guy. The 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 ingenue wanted the guy. It was never very empowering like you know fuck all of you kind of thing like i'm just gonna mm-hmm. f- i don't need no man kind of situation mm-hmm. like i don't recall a single novella that wasn't about that it was freaking mario king koopa and princess peach over and over <laughs> again i'm just so fucking tired of that it's so just and then the women were always so helpless they're like I, I, I don't know i'm sorry they always sound like they're having an orgasm when they talk um the on the ingenues <laughs> Would always sound like, which um, actually, like you just said, sounds like Princess Peach. Her her mumbling Mario, in when when you would be please. between between worlds, like Mario. I I can't I can't stand it. I'm like, really, none of you can kick this viejo in the balls. Come on, man. Come on. Stop but writing wait. us like a bunch of come mierdas. Wait, Jenny. Wait, wait, wait. We have to be fair. We have to be fair. Which is that. I do think the novela landscape is changing. It's changing to more modern times. You Better mentioned it before. Anyway. You mentioned Casa de las Flores. Yes. It has a show. Up. It includes um, people from the LGBT community. There's even a trans character. Yeah. Um, then you have Celia, which is a story about Celia Cruz and, you know, mm-hmm. Afro-Cuban character. And then you have a uh, Venezuelan Jane the Virgin, which is a woman who's like impregnated but takes power. Yes. Um, she's like a virgin who's impregnated, but she takes power over her narrative, and it's like really empowering. I mean, it's still about virginity and about like pregnancy and like some weird religious undertones there, but it it is yeah. about a woman taking control of her fate. Yes. So yes, I don't know. I don't know. I think we're moving in the right direction. I agree, based on <laughs> these examples. Um, I want to see more of that, more inclusivity. Um, I think people are just tired of the old shit. Just get, uh, basura. 
<risa> ¡Basura! ¡Basura! Said it like Celia Cruz. ¡Basura! ¡Basura! <risa> Okay, Jenny, um, now is the time where we share words that we like. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I want to share with you one of my favorite novela. I want to share with you one, some, I want to share with you one of my favorite novela um, insults because it's so ridiculous. Hit so, me. monigote estupido. Do you know what that means at all? Monigote. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> so monigote, I didn't know what it meant. A monigote is like a puppet, but not just like a regular puppet. It's like a black magic puppet, like a voodoo doll type of puppet who like that you use to, I don't know, find, cast spells on someone through magic. And sometimes these like puppets are like lodged in chimneys for some reason. So this, if we were actually going to translate it in English, would be like um, weird voodoo doll used in folk magic and witchcraft. Stupid. Like that's what that's what money got this to build me. Oh my god. Oh I best. wonder who was the first person to pitch it. Like, oh my god, we need a word to like to like we need a word that makes men feel uncomfortable. We need uh, insult. We need an insult for a man. What can it be? It's a weird voodoo doll puppet and make him dumb. <laughs> well, I've got one. So, okay, show me. I just I just like the way it feels on my tongue. That sounds terrible. Um <laughs> uh <laughs> moving on. I learned this word because of another classic Talia novela where she also acts with her evil villain sister. The uh, novela was called Maria Mercedes. Mm -hmm. So the word is Sarapastrosa. Oh Sarapastrosa. God. Um Ugh. because you know, Talia looks like someone with fleas in her hair in every novel that she plays um and so that do you know what that means at all so it, it, I, I don't know I, I like imagining it's like someone in el pasto in el campo like someone that's like dirtyish but i don't know you're pretty much right it means like dirty in english it means scruffy that's so appropriate because always when there's these like como que poor characters that you're yeah. like rooting for or whatever they always start out the season just like dre dress terribly they have like, and, like some dirty. smudges like they have like, like a couple of smudges on their face and it's like what no one looks like that no why are you and, you're overdoing it and then like fingerless gloves it's like you're going for the madonna look i don't know what you're trying to accomplish here with, the, with <laughs> this um and then like a bird's nest for hair but yeah sara pastrosa It just means that, like you, you, you have dirty clothes, and and you're just a, you're a mess. You're you're scruffy. Truly, the insults in these things are symbols for how absurd everything about telenovelas are, and how yes, we celebrate them. We also criticize them, and we also hope that they continue to evolve, and you know, transform into more modern pieces of art that we can enjoy and make fun of i all i ask is that they keep the language just as colorful and interesting um without obviously being offensive <laughs> amen amen <laughs> jenny amen <laughs> but but yeah let's keep let's keep let's bring more celias let's bring more casa de las flores more lgbtq plus representation more indigenous and Afro -lat -lat Latino actors into the mix, please, for the love of God. And also, you know, we're tired of being kidnapped. Can this please stop? Please. <laughs> just women stop. don't usually get kidnapped this much. Let's just make a story about, I don't know, a marketing intern somewhere. I don't know. I'm just throwing an idea out there. I don't know. Think Emily in Paris. Like, you know. <laughs> We should do em <laughs> Emily in Medellin. Please. Let's just do that. <laughs> <laughs> um thank you guys so much for listening we've been reading all your emails if you have anything to add about telenovelas about the crazy language that is used or what you used to watch please write to us at hyphenated at pitaya.fm we read all your emails and it makes us very happy
And we might do some live streams in the future on our social media platforms and discuss some of your comments and emails there. Oh, my God. That's so exciting. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Jenny. I'll see you soon, Zara Pastrosa. Just kidding. You're not. You're not a Zara Pastrosa. <laughs> It sounds like I a sandwich. It, it sounds like a it sounds like a, a deli slice. I would like oh God, to order the sandwich with the Zara Pastrosa. Oh, I'll, I'll do the Zara Pastrosa on the side. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>